Good afternoon, geometry students. I am super happy to see you. Uh, we are doing our lesson 10.7, the last notes for chapter 10. You may have noticed that we skipped five and six. Um, we as a geometry team decided to do that because sections five and six are not typically covered on your SAT exam or in future math classes. And this gives us more time to focus on the sections that are. So the lesson that we're doing today, as I said, is 10.7 on circles in the coordinate plane. The most important thing for you to know is the actual equation of a circle. So you know how we have an equation for lines, we call that y equals mx plus b. Well, we also have an equation for circles, and that is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, where r is your radius and h comma k is the center. So this is the formula that we're gonna be using for every example that we do on the notes. And um, it represents uh, the equation for a circle that we can also draw visually if we have our x-axis here and our y-axis there and a center at hk and then our radius would represent the distance from the center to the outside of the circle. So the equation is basically the set of all points that are equidistant from the center of that circle. So let's go ahead and do example number one we need to write the equation of a circle that has a center at four negative five and a radius of six. So what I like to do is label my center. So this could be H and that could be K. And obviously this is your R. And then we wanna plug everything that we have into that equation. So we're gonna write X minus four squared plus y minus negative 5 squared equals 6 squared. Now, it is important that we simplify this equation by turning this into a plus sign here and then squaring the 6. So we would have x minus 4 squared plus y plus 5 squared equals 36. Now, sometimes what will happen is you will be given a picture of a circle. So let's do example number two. And you're asked to come up with the equation based on the picture that you're given. Let's say that the center of the circle is at one, three. And we also see another point, and I think, think what I'm gonna do is draw an arrow for this. Um, we also see another point at three, three. This is not the world's best circle, but oh well, we'll make do with it. There we go. Um, and we also have another point at three, three. In this case, the simplest thing to do is to count out the radius. We can see that the radius is two units long here. So what I like to do is label the H and K and make a little note that the R is two. And then we're gonna plug everything back into that same formula that we had. So it's gonna be X minus one squared plus Y minus three squared equals four. So essentially, once we know the center and we also know the radius, we can write the equation. Okay, then sometimes you might be given an actual equation and have to graph it. So for example, Let's say we have x minus two squared plus y plus three squared equals four. What I like to do is line up the equation underneath this. Uh, let's see, y minus k squared and r squared. And that kind of helps me to figure out what's going on here. If I look at this information here, I can see that r squared is four. So if r squared is four, and I take the square root of both sides, I get that r is two. So I know that my radius is two. Then I can look at this number here and see that my h is also two. 
So the center, which is the HK, is going to be 2 for the H value. Now this one, it can be a little bit helpful to think of this value here as y minus negative 3. If you do that, you can see that k is negative 3. Notice on these other examples, we see the opposite signs. If my center is at positive 1, positive 3, in my equation, it's going to look like negative 1 and negative 3. And that's because there is a negative sign built into the formula. So when I see a negative 2 here, that tells me the center is at positive 2. And a positive 3 here means in the center it's at negative 3. So if I wanted to graph this, I would go 2 over and 3 down to put my center. And then with a radius of 2, I would have a circle that looked like this. So that's what it would look like in those three scenarios. Now, the most difficult problem is when you're not given the radius. So let's do an example like that. Um, let's say that we have a center. Let's call this example four, and this will be our last example. Let's say our center is at negative three, negative two. So we'll call that H and K. And it passes through the point one, negative two. And I'll erase a little bit of the board here so that we have a little bit more room to see what's going on. Okay, and so I'm gonna label this my X and my Y. Now, we do need to know what R is in order to write the equation. So I'm gonna fill everything I have into this equation and then solve for R. So where it says X, I'm gonna put one because of the X value there, minus my H, which is negative three squared. And then Y is negative two, so negative 2 minus negative 2 squared equals r squared. Now, I do need to turn this into a plus here. Two minus signs in a row make a plus. Same thing here. So then I have 4 squared plus, it looks like these cancel out, 0 squared equals r squared, and r squared is 16. Now, normally, we would solve for r, but in this case, because our equation has an r squared in it, I would just leave it the way it is. Now, if you want, you can line everything up with your equation. You know your h is negative three, and your k is negative two, and your r squared is 16. So I'm just gonna use the equation that we have up on the board here already and put everything in underneath it. So I'm gonna write x minus my h, which is negative three squared, plus y minus my k, which is negative two squared, is equal to 16. Don't forget to simplify by turning these two minus signs into a plus, and that would be your final equation for example number four. I hope this has been helpful and I'll look forward to seeing you. Bye.